Welcome to the weekend. Perfect time to do due diligence for hot penny stocks. The charts aren't bouncing around. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is the weekend of March 8th. Now, what I like to do here is just to share my own personal due diligence with you on a hot penny stock. I trade penny stocks from the bell in the morning to the bell in the afternoon. I'm looking for stocks under five bucks, which are on every market, the OTC, the NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange. So there's no lack of penny stocks, but I'm particularly looking for penny stocks that have heat, that have the potential to make us money. Now you can find that heat in a lot of places. If you've got the time and the energy, you can read all those press releases and filings. If you're in more of a hurry, go look at the charts. You can see a lot of charts in a little amount of time. And at a glance, you can see if there's heat in the chart. You can see a blue tsunami across the bottom of the chart. That says there's volume coming in. You can see a breakout setup. You can see a fall and a bounce. These are all signs of heat, of a chart that's ready to run. When you find a chart that has heat, then invest the time going through all those filings and press releases looking for a hot piece of information. You find a hot piece of news to go with your hot chart, you've got yourself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I like to share with you, and I got one for you right now. This is Chromo Cell Therapeutics Corporation, ticker CHRO. This is a biotech, right? Been a long time since we've looked at a biotech. I actually can't remember the last one we looked at. I think I got sidetracked into AI. But I got to tell you, folks, biotechs and biopharmas are always making money. Every single day from 7.20 in the morning to 9.30, I post all the pre-market runners, all the stocks that have news. And let me tell you, more than half of them are biotechs and biopharmas. When the news comes out, they run early, pre-market. There are some huge runs there. Well, this stock came on the market February 13th, and she came on around $6, $6.50. And then, like most IPOs, she fell after she came on. She came down about 40, 50%. She's down there around $3.50, looking like she's ready to bounce. And that too is par for the course. After these IPOs come on and they fall, they hit a floor and they bounce, and then they start to run. And this company has just come out with big news. They've got their first licensing deal. So it's a good time to be taking a look at Chromo Cell Therapeutics, ticker CHRO. She finished today on Friday just under $3.54, and she dropped just over 2%. Now, this is a penny stock on the major exchange, which comes with benefits. First off, there's no transaction fees with major exchange stocks. You can buy the shares and sell the shares for free. You can trade at pre-market, after-market. You can never do that with the OTC. And as I said, these biotechs and biopharmas, when news comes out, they run early, pre-market, and they run hard. Not to mention there's a lot more oversight on those major exchanges. You're not going to go through all the BS that you go through on the OTC. And there's a lot more money and a lot more volume on the major exchange. So you're going to get a lot more activity. So, what does Chromo Cell do? Well, I do have a description here, but I want to give you more information than they give us here. So, let's jump on over to their website. Bouncing over here to the company's website. This is chromocell.com. So, they tell us here that they are a clinical stage biotech company that's focused on developing and commercializing new therapeutics to alleviate pain. Every biotech and biopharm is making medication for some condition, some disease, and there are always a certain amount of people with that condition. But everybody has pain. Nobody is <laughs> excluded. So they are working with the biggest market they possibly can. Our clinical focus is to selectively target the sodium ion channel known as NAV 1.7 as well as other receptors in the NAV family. Okay, I am not a physician, I'm not a scientist, but I'll do my best to explain this. We are looking at pain receptors, the nervous system, and the NAB 1.7 shows up whenever there's pain, or it doesn't show up when there isn't pain. There is actually a congenital disorder where people can't feel pain, and there is a lack of NAB 1.7. And people who have excessive pain have an excessive amount of NAB 1.7.
So the company believes if you can block the NAB 1.7, you can stop pain. NAB 1.7 has been genetically validated as a pain receptor in human psychology. Genetic studies have shown that families with certain inherited NAB 1.7 modulation consistently show a pathology of not feeling pain. A NAB 1.7 blocker is a chemical entity that modulates the structure of the sodium channel in a way that prevents the transmission of the signal of pain to be perceived. Our goal is to develop a novel proprietary class of NAV blockers that targets the body's peripheral nervous system. Initially for, and I am not going to try to pronounce that name, I've tried over a dozen times and I can't get it. They call it EM, a rare condition that primarily affects the feet and less commonly the hands. It is a burning pain that affects the extremities, causing severe redness and increased temperature that may be episodic or almost continuous in nature. So they tell us that they are really working on three types of pain. This EM, neuropathic pain, and eye pain. And now they are also working with acute pain and migraines with the new product that they just got in this licensing deal that we're going to cover. Now, to get a little more information, I'm diving over here to their deck, a presentation. This is a digital brochure that talks about the company in general terms, making it real easy to understand. And I'm not going to go through all of it, but I do want to share a little more information with you. As I said, this company came on the market February 13th, and this is when they came on. They made about $6 million, and they put that $6 million to good use. They had lots of things they could do with their trials and their drug advancements, which is what they are doing. Now, they came on with a low float, and then they had some resale shares of about $3 million. These are shares that the insiders owned before they came on the market, and they added those to the market. And they are accounted for. You're going to see those when we look at the filings. They fell into the Form 4s. Now, their compound is called CC8464. This is their NAV block. And they are working, as I said, on three panes right now. Now, this EM, this is a very important one. This could get out there first. Now, this is a rare disease. Very few people have it. So why would you make a drug that you're not going to be able to sell a lot of? Because it's opening the door. This compound, CC8464, works with all kinds of pain. But they have picked this one rare disease because there's no other drug out there for this disease. If they can prove that this drug works on this disease, they will get what they call breakthrough designation orphan designation, meaning there's nothing else out there to help these people. So we're going to help, meaning the FDA, we are going to help push this drug through. We're going to make it fast. We're going to make it easy. We're going to get it on the market as soon as possible. Once that drug is on the market, you can then bring it back in and say, you know, this drug is also good for headaches, backaches, toothaches, and you add these extra conditions. If you add them all at the very beginning, it extends your trial. you got to prove it works for every single condition that you're listing. But if you list one, get it approved, then bring it back. The new condition doesn't have to go from the very beginning of the trial. It starts way up here and it gets through much quicker. So if they can get this approved for EM, that opens up the door for a lot of others. But they are also working on that neuropathic pain and eye pain. And we are going to take a look at the news where they have this new sublingual spray for acute pain and migraine headaches. What we're talking about is a spray that goes under your tongue and it is absorbed very quickly, virtually as fast as inhaling. We're talking about a matter of minutes. You can stop your pain. You can't do that with pills. You take a pill, it takes 30 to 45 minutes for it to go through your entire digestive system, get into the blood, and then start getting spread around. This works a lot quicker. They also have it so it can go into the nose as well. Now, what's really exciting is that they have just got their compound, CC8464, out of Phase 1 clinical studies, moving into Stage 2. Phase 1 is strictly for safety. This takes about a year. Take the drug. 
Does it make you feel worse than better? Do you have serious side effects? If you can prove you're safe, you get through phase one in about a year and move into phase two, which is for efficacy. This can take up to three years. This is the period in which you prove how well your drug works on the condition you say it can help. You get through phase two, you move into phase three. Phase three is where you pit your drug up against all of your competitors. The more competitors you have, the longer phase three can take. And this can take usually five years. But if you have orphan designation, you can get your drug approved a lot quicker because you don't have to prove it works better than anybody else's drug. Yours is the only drug that works. So right now their compound has moved into phase two. Now let's take a look at the management team here. We got two gentlemen I want to focus in on, top management, the CEO and chief financial officer, Mr. Frank Canoodle. Mr. Canoodle has 30 years of management experience in growing early stage companies. He's raised more than $300 million in venture capital debt offerings, and he's managed more than 15 mergers and acquisition transactions. Mr. Canoodle holds numerous board positions currently at both public and private companies. He is involved with Ecom Medical, Relativity Acquisition Corp, Capstone Technologies, which is on the OTC, ticker CATG, and he has two degrees, an MBA from Wharton School and a BA from Tufts University. Then we got the Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Eric Lang. Dr. Lang is an anesthesiologist and a pain management specialist. Perfect for this company with over 25 years of experience in the pharmaceutical industry. During his pharmaceutical career, he has had both broad-based drug and device development expertise in a variety of therapeutic areas. Dr. Lang has experience in designing development programs from early transitional stages through phase three, including the successful filing of several recent INDs and NDAs. When your drugs get all approved, you then got to get permission to sell them. We got a new drug here. You have a new drug you want tested. Here's the introduction. He does all that. So he's good to have around. And he's got a couple degrees as well. He's got an MDA from Ben Gurion University, Israel, and completed postgraduate training at Emory University. Now, I'm not going to go into any more information here, folks. There is more information. Just come on over to their website. You can find this presentation there. So let's take a look at the stock now and see what it's doing. We're back here at the otcmarkets.com website checking out this major exchange stock, right? Folks, this is where I virtually do all of my research, at least initially. I don't care if it's OTC or major exchange. This site does very well at producing most of the information I need for any stock on any market. And if they don't have it, well, bloody heck, there's a whole internet out there I can go check out. So right now, we are checking out Chromo Cell, ticker CHRO, looking at a relative volume. Over the last 30 days, she's been doing roughly 21,000 shares. Friday, she dropped down to 15,000 shares. Definitely under the radar. And I think that may be because she just came onto the market. Share structure for Crow. Hey, we've still got a low float. Not that I have any clue what it is. Outstanding share count is at 9.2 million. Low floats start at 10 million. So we've absolutely got a low float here. And the company's always had a low float. Market cap for the company, we are currently at about 33 million. Financials for Crow. Well, this is a research and development company. They're looking for a miracle drug. So we don't have any revenues on the annual. We don't have any revenues on the quarterly. Checking out her balance sheet. We've got some money in the bank. We've got $22,000. We've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. Total assets, $22,000. Total liabilities, ow. We have got 5.9 million. So our stockholder equity is actually stockholder deficit at this point of the game, which isn't surprising with most research and development companies. That's the way it stands. So we're holding 5.9 million in deficit right now. Now let's go take a look at these disclosures. There's a lot of hot disclosures here, folks, and I'm not going to go through every single one of them. 
However, this all has to do with them launching on the IPO. They just came onto the market, which means now they're going to be getting a lot of attention, and that's what happened. They got a lot of attention from investors. These are all investments, every single one of these. These Form 4s are filed when the insiders acquire or dispose of the company stock. Well, remember those extra shares they put on the market? That's what these are. That covers that. Now, these SC13Ds and 13Gs are always, always good news. These are new owners coming on board. They are investing enough money to buy enough shares to get a percentage of the company. If it is a 13D, that is a silent investor just giving his money. If it is a 13G, this is an active investor who wants to play a role in the company's growth. And as you can see, these have all come in since she's come onto the market. Most of them have been here just in the recent month. So we have a lot of attention being focused on this company right now by outside investors, big investors. Now let's take a look at that news. We've got some news, but because the company hasn't been around very long, we don't have a lot of news. All this news is about the IPO closing and them getting their 6.6, .6, almost $7 million, which they're putting to work right now. Then we had a piece of news come out on the 27th of February. Diving into this news, Benuvia Operations and Chromocell Therapeutics announced strategic partnership to advance healthcare solutions. Benuvia, a leader in pharmaceutical innovation, and Chromocell Therapeutics, a pioneer in the development of non-opioid pain treatment therapeutics, are pleased to announce Chromocell's first development and license agreement. Under the agreement, the company has licensed a sublingual formulation of diophenic spray for the treatment of acute pain. Now that's the name of it, diophenic, but it breaks down into two different sprays, one for the nose, called Rizotripatan, and then one that goes in the mouth. This one is called Andan Sertron. You know I'm tearing those names up. Um, they tell us here that under the terms of the agreement, Chromocell expects to develop clinical programs of one or more of the licensed products within 18 months. During 2024, Chromocell intends to complete the development and the business plans for each of the three compounds with the expectation that the development would commence following the completion of the review by the FDA. Then, Benuvia will support these efforts by providing the manufacturing and the supply services, thereby establishing a synergistic partnership that is expected to accelerate the path to market for innovative therapeutic options. So we got a few things going on here. It turns out that Benuvia has some spray that goes into your nose and into your mouth called diclofenic that this company has gotten a hold of that helps with pain relief. But Benuvia is also going to manufacture and help with supply services as well. This sounds like a great deal right here. Joining forces with Benuvia represents our first new step forward in our mission to build our portfolio and develop novel therapeutic solutions addressing pain treatment and related conditions with non-addictive drugs. Together, we believe we are posed to make a profound impact on the lives of patients around the world. Now, here in America, folks, opiates are making a lot of money. They're making trillions of dollars, and they are costing society trillions of dollars in the damage that they are doing. But as long as they make big money, cheap drugs just aren't very appealing to the businessmen in America. But the rest of the world, not everybody pays for their drugs. All of your socialist countries like Australia, Canada, the UK, all these countries pay for the drugs themselves and give them away for free, basically, to their citizens. So they're going to want drugs that don't cause harm to their citizens, that don't cost them money to fix. They're going to want drugs that cost less. They're going to want drugs that are efficient. So this company's got a lot of potential. Non-opiate painkillers are a market that is just waiting to explode. Now, as I said, they've only been on the market for, well, about a month now, and they did drop, and I think they're at a floor right now and are about ready to come up.
Not a big chart, but let's go take a look at it nonetheless. Jumping on over here to my free trading platform, Think or Swim, we are going to chart Chromo Cell Therapeutics, ticker CHRO. Now, not that it's necessary. I have this opened up to a six month, four hour view. That is her entire chart, right? She came on the market, oh my bad, not February 13th, February 16th. So I sit corrected. She came on the market on the 16th, hitting a high of $6, which I believe is what she opened up at. And she has been falling ever since. Hitting a low on March 4th of $3.16 jumping back up and creating this support right here at $3.25. She's been bouncing off of that, just going sideways. We've had a new SMA come onto the four hour chart, our 20 day SMA, but the price isn't paying any mind to it. Our volume is very light right now. Things aren't looking too bright, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Look at our oscillators. This is our PPO, percentage price oscillator. A lot like your MACD, but the MACD uses the whole price, your percentage price oscillator, that's right, uses a percentage of the price. Well, you read these two the same. You want that blue line on top of the other line and climbing. Well, this is very depressed, but she has quit falling, laid on the floor, and she is now so slowly, ever so gradually pushing up. That's all we need, a change of trend, a change of direction. Our MACD has already had it three days ago. She had a crossover. You can see she's climbing and our RSI bounced off the floor of 30 and it's currently at 39. So she's climbing too, though she's pretty chilly down there at 39. Take a look at our 20 day, one hour view. Not a lot of difference, a lot of extra bars, same track. But what we see here is we've now got a 50 day SMA on the board. She has been working to get on top of the 20, came down, bounced off of our resistance. And it looks like she is above, she sure is. She is way above our 20, just underneath the 50 day SMA. Oscillators are still looking like they're in recovery, like they want to start climbing. PPO is pushing up, getting ready to get on top of the pink line. Our MACD is on top of her line, just getting ready to cross the floor, the signal line. And we've already got a green bar there showing us positive pressure. And our RSI is still climbing, coming from 39 up to 51. Still a little chilly, but it's warming up. Now let's dive down to our five day, five minute. Now we've got something to talk about. We've got every SMA on the board. 200 day SMA is clear up here. We've got our 200 day haul and everything in between. So we had a high five days ago of $3.82. She was above the 50 day SMA. Crashed down to the slow of $3.16 under everything, including this resistance. Came up on top. She has now got a strong support to work off of. Bounced up, came back, and she is basically just going sideways but she is making headway going sideways. She has crossed the 200 hall. She's gotten on top of the 20. Once on top of the 20, she stuck there and she hung on to the 20 until she got close to the 50 and see the excitement. Every time she gets close to the 50, we get bigger bars. So we had a bounce up onto the 50 here. Once she got on top, she jumped on her nine day escalator and all day Thursday, she gradually climbed. Then on Friday, the climb was over. She came back down, falling down to our resistance, bouncing back up onto our 200 haul. And right now she is trying to work her way through these SMAs. We are at 353, that puts her right up here. So we are above the 50 and above the 20, bouncing off of that 200 haul. Our oscillators still looking good. Every single oscillator on all these charts show that she wants to start climbing now and the five minute shows the most strength. We have definitely got an up direction going here. We definitely have an imminent crossover. We have got a crossover on our MACD climbing and our RSI has finally gotten over 55 and it is pushing up as well. I like CHRO because when the company came on the market, folks, at $6, that price was already figured out. When they come onto the market and they come on at $6, $10, $40, they just don't pull that number out of thin air. They have a 
mathematical way to figure out what the company is worth and they put the shares on the market at that price so this came on at six bucks and it fell almost 50 percent down to three dollars and 16 cents do you think they lost 50 percent of their value in three weeks no of course not it was just market sentiment but look at the big market sentiment i'm talking about all those s c 13 g's we had a bunch of big investors looking at this company no the value hasn't diminished the value is there and probably growing as we talk so i think this is the floor i think we're bouncing off of it and i think the five minute chart tells us we are probably going to get a push off of this 200 day haul above our resistance all of our oscillators are my backup. That's why I feel that strong about it. So I am looking for her to return to six bucks and then start to grow. So we've got a nice gain here, folks. I would be putting CHRO on my watch list. Watch for news. And I'm going to give you this as a heads up. Get up early. Check your news as fast as you can. If you see any news for this company before the market bell, Watch and see if she doesn't run pre-market. CHRO, it does need some more due diligence, folks. You know I didn't cover everything. And I think you'll like what you read. Pain relief is big business. Every single one of us is a potential customer. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya. Pa-da-pa-da-pa-da-pa-da-pa-da-pa-da-pa-da-pa-da-pa-da-pa-da-pa-da-pa-da-pa-da-pa-da-pa-da-pa-da-pa-da-pa-da-pa-da-pa-da